So good morning guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing great. Happy Saturday morning. Look at all this. Y'all wanna know how much farmers spend on feed? These are empty feed bags to either be gone or to repurpose. Money, 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 money. <laughs> So, I just finished doing all the barn chores. James has already gone back down to the house. I told him I was going to film. He's like, all right, I'll go back to down to the house. I was like, okay, honey. I'm going to make him some homemade vegetable soup today. And uh, everything's done. So, if you see mud or rain, we are a mud mess here in southeast Tennessee. I mean, it is disgusting, disgusting. And it's hot. Like, we're humid. We're not freezing temperatures. I mean, I'm out here working in a t-shirt in February. Hello, we do this every year. So, I just got done milking, and I got about, I'm going to say I got a good quart this morning. Salt is just rocking it, y'all. She's a beautiful goat. She's so healthy, and the milk is delicious. And look here, I want to show you something else that I'm about to do. I'm kind of waiting it out a little bit, because my luck is I would have baby bunnies, little tiny kits, and then it would freeze. It could do that anyway, because we know we can get cold temperatures all the way through April. Oh, if I pick this up, I'm gonna, I got me a new nesting box. You may use something different. I have some nesting boxes for my bunnies. You've seen my rabbits over the years. I do have Rex rabbits, and I did not breed them last year. Just got this the other day, James. James brought it home. This is my Valentine present. <laughs> Really, it probably is. So anyway, so I've got that going on. But what I did, I've decided I'm just gonna breed for now, coming up, I don't know exactly when. Uh, maybe, in a, maybe in a couple of days, maybe in a couple of weeks, I don't know. Um, but I'm gonna breed Miss Martha, and uh, her name is Martha. And I went ahead and I, had, I moved her a little bit, um, and I have Squirrel now next to her. So I'm letting them, they're in new cages next to each other. So I'm letting them, you know, get used to their new area and they're sniffing on each other and like, ooh, you, you're kind of cute. So I'm giving them several days to acclimate to each other. So they're next to each other, but they're not in the same cage. They're just next to each other. I'm not gonna jump over over there to show you. You'll see, it. you'll see it soon enough, I promise. So I have that coming up. And so I also have, the fact that we are down to the last nitty gritty of bottle feeding the babies. I am officially down to one feeding a day in the mornings for the morning feed. And um, they're getting a bottle. And I'm, I'm what I'm doing is, instead of it being all the way to the tippy top, I'm kind of pulling it back a little bit, like maybe filling it to here. And then do that for a couple of days. And then I'm kind of filling it to here. And then all of a sudden, poof. You're just eating grain and hay, which they love it. They are, they are little, I swear to you, I do not have goat kids. I have little piggies, <laughs> okay? They are all doing wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Vinny is doing great. He is just like, hey, hey. So everything here on the farm is great. We're just getting a lot of rain right now. We're supposed to through Tuesday and then we get cold again. So that's why I'm sort of debating when to, uh, I'm gonna put these, uh, this buck, bunny and this doe bunny together to maybe make babies. We'll see. Doesn't take very long. You're just looking at around 30 to 33 days, depending upon the situation there. And uh, poof, you got babies. So that's what I'm saying. If I bred them right now and she took, I could have babies by, gosh, what, the middle of March, maybe? We could still get a blizzard. So over here on the side of the barn where we had, we're gonna have the concrete laid, do you remember that? And also down at the chicken coop that's not been done yet. Number one, the weather, we, it got canceled due to weather because we became the Tennessee Tundra there for a while. And then the guys called and something happened to the cement truck. So they've had to have it fixed, of course. So they've called and we're supposed to maybe, maybe, maybe have it done by next week. I'm not holding my breath. It's not, uh, I'm not too stressed about it. I really do want it put together as soon as possible because I want to fill these large water tanks. I'm going to fill them at first. I'm going to fill them with my well water. It's the best doggone water I ever here in East Tennessee. I'm serious. It's wonderful. If you start drinking awesome uh, well water, you'll never want to go back to city water. And I know people are like, really? What? Or even bottled water. It's just, it is so wonderful. I can't even begin to explain it. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that, but we are getting that done. And of course, here's Miss Ginger. 
in all of her splendor today. But we are doing great, and I just wanted to say thank you for being here. But I've got something I want to talk about today. I've got several things. I didn't make a video yesterday. Uh, we've just been so busy around the farm and doing lots of things that I gave myself a I was like, take the pressure off, girl. Which making videos is not any pressure. It's just time. So I devoted my time to my house and cleaning up and catching up with my family and things like that. And the farm, of course. So here's something I want to talk about because I know that you've seen this. I did see this when it came out the other day, but I already was making other videos. So I just let it go because I figured about 17,000 other YouTubers would jump on it and you would see it and that's what matters. So there's that. Um, so I'm sure you are aware. I may have to go to the car only because we're back to the barn only because it's getting real, it's windy. Probably more rain's moving in. Um, so have you seen the thing about the uh, sheriff in Ohio? Yeah. Let's talk about that. Gingy, we'll walk after I film, okay, sweetheart? Is that okay with you? Give me just a few minutes, girlfriend. Can you wait on me, girl? Guess that's a no. Have mercy, it is hot. Oh my gosh, I am sweating like a you-know-what in church. Holy moly. Okay, so here's the deal. Okay, so I'm going to be careful with my words here. Oh, not because what I'm going to say is bad, um, but, you know, somebody is going to immediately go on the defense because they're going to think that I am trying to downplay the words of a, a sheriff or a police officer, and I'm not. In fact, I have utmost respect for all of them. Your local authorities are who you're going to be, who, who, if anybody helps you, it's going to be locals, okay? It's not going to be state level necessarily, and it's definitely not going to be at the, uh, the federal level. <laughs> Come on. Um, did you hear that? Let that just resonate. What'd she say? Hey, Jeb, what's she, what's she talking about? Now, she's getting deep over here. Mm -hmm. I mean, do I need to bring Gilly out here or what? I thought about that. <laughs> so I listened to his uh, press conference the other day, and I'm like, yep, mm-hmm, yep. Mm -hmm. First of all, no disrespect to him. In fact, let me tell you something right now. We've got a situation right now here in uh, East Tennessee, Blount County, uh, where two officers were shot day before yesterday. Uh, the man is still on the loose. They are looking for him. We've got the hottest manhunt going on right now in East Tennessee. And um, I put that on my Facebook page this morning. Uh, the gentleman, he was stopped. And uh, I guess he didn't like that. I don't know the full story completely. Uh, they're not releasing all the information that we know uh, that I've seen. Um, maybe you guys out there know more than I do. But uh, there was an officer shot and killed, a gentleman. And then um, the, his partner, who is a woman, um, she was shot, uh, but she was only injured in the leg, and I think she's back home. Uh, but can you imagine the PTSD she's going to have from that? For the young female officer, rest of her life. Um, I think she'll work through it. I pray for her, so please pray for these people. Please pray for their families, and please pray that this gentleman is uh, caught very quickly. Clearly, he is very dangerous. I don't know the full circumstances of his background, but... Uh, he did what he did, so justice needs to be served. There it is. Okay, so long story short, so I just want to give you the background. That if you've watched my channel for a long time, I'm not speaking against uh, your local authorities warning you of something to happen. They should be doing that. In fact, everybody around him should have respectfully said, yes, sir, no disrespect, sir, but duh. Um, what I want to point out to you and I don't know if anybody else has done this or not. I don't really, I hope they have. I don't know if they have. I, I, I'm out here in the mud. I don't know. Um, where's this information coming from? So from what I understand, there was a conference in Washington, D.C. with, what, is it 3,300 um, sheriffs? Okay. The president wouldn't meet with them. I hope you picked up on that. I mean, well, I it, he doesn't know where he's at, so how is he supposed to do that? <laughs> That's another video coming. Um, but the warning is coming from who? Did you say the FBI? Oh. Okay. Um, how many um, illegals have we allowed to come across? How many illegals are we helping come across the, the border from the federal level? I'm just asking questions. I'm just, I'm just asking. Y yes. 
Have you thought about that? Are, has this kind of, has this rolled around in your brain? Now, what I mean by this is, or what I'm asking is, I don't know. Let's just talk about it. Um, I'm not saying this wouldn't happen because why do you think I'm telling you and so many people, uh, good people around you might be saying that you need to prepare? Why is there such a concern for all the undocumented, illegal whoever's from all over the world just walking across our borders right now. So is this really rocket science to you? I mean, do you really need somebody to tell you that there should there are multiple red flags? Like I said, the sheriff should be telling you that. That's his job. That's what he's supposed to do. But aren't you already there? And when they when they tell you where they're getting their information from, did did that not raise a bigger red flag for you? It it, it kind of did for me. I'm just saying. Did you say the FBI? What all is the FBI? What what all have they been doing lately? Hmm. I just find that interesting. So here's my point: when you get information. You should absolutely question where are they getting their information from, and then you should question why you're being told this and how. Um, I try my very best to do that with everything now. In fact, that's all I. In fact, all I do is question the questions of the question. I mean, it's like every everything. It's like we're constantly questioning, and I have been saying for a long time to you: ask why, ask when ask how why now we are in 2024 moving quickly towards an election there's a lot of things going on every single day there is so much to talk about every single day because a new scenario presents itself Several, actually, every single day. It's almost impossible to keep up with everything. But do your best to go, Why? where are they getting this and why and how? So just like the other day, uh, about two weeks ago, I put up a video about the Bible. You can go down about the Bible, uh, the surveillance, how you're being tracked in terms of your purchases. And I put the link and the information where I got it from down in the description Always scour through the descriptions to find my links, okay? When I tell you I'm going to put a link down below, I always put a link down below unless I just had a, you know, a peri moment there, perimenopause moment, and I went, I forgot. But the information is coming from information that you can find yourself. So here's what's so interesting. Somebody couldn't find the link and got mad at me because they didn't know how to expand the description and they accused me basically of lying. Uh, and not doing what I said I was going to do. Well, I corrected that for him very quickly. But I want you to know that this morning, I just turned on the TV and was him hauling around the house trying to get everything ready to come up to the barn and to get everything done. And all of this was on the news this morning. They were showing footage of uh, Janet Yellen being questioned and the Treasury being questioned about all of this. So it's not a lie. Okay, so I'm just saying you have to dig and sometimes you may not find exactly what you're looking for. But when you hear people say, especially those of any type of authority telling you something, you need to ask questions of them when you can. And when they tell you things, you need to, in your own mind, be thinking outside of the box of why, how, when. But most importantly, who is telling you this and what motives do they have? I mean, why are you telling us that we should be concerned about a terrorist attack and ooh, we better be worried about it, which you should. I'm not telling you you shouldn't because we should. But at the same time, they're not doing anything to fix it. I'm not seeing them do anything to fix it. Are you? I'm not. I mean, clearly you can go out in the middle of New York and just beat the crap out of a bunch of, out of, a bunch of cops, get arrested, and you get turned loose a couple days later and you're flipping everybody off. So I really don't get the impression. I mean, they could have done a lot worse. Do you care? So why are you telling us? So I hope this brought a different edge to this subject because I know a lot of you are concerned about it and you should be, which is why you should be preparing. You should be doing everything that you can to make sure your home is prepared and to make sure that you can defend yourself and your community as best as you can. And you better be thinking way out there in terms of of those possibilities, okay? 
I'm not here to scare you. I'm, I'm not scaring you. We're talking about what you're being told. Yep, and you need to be worried about it, praying about it. So continue to pray, continue to prepare. Make sure you are continuing to get your five cans. Make sure you are continuing to work on your fitness. Make sure you are continuing to, if you are not where you need to be in terms of self-defense, you better get there today. And I want to say this real quick. I may show this, uh, I don't know, I'm doing another video on it. Some ladies were asking me, what is my favorite way to carry? As you know, I carry and I uh, conceal. I, I have several methods that I use, but my favorite overall, um, I find is the belly band. Uh, you do what works best for you, clearly. Um, I don't like, um, I don't want something further out on my jeans. Uh, I want something that will fit me regardless of what I'm wearing. And it, it can get a little warm. Of course, I'm a little hot natured right now. But, I mean, <laughs> whatever. But uh, that is my preference overall. But there are different ways. And you should have different ways, ladies, it, 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 for you to be able to, to carry your best friend uh, depending on what, how you feel or where you're going or what you're wearing. So look into different options, but the belly band is my favorite. Well, guys, I'm going to break. I, I am covered in mud, <laughs> feeling great. I've got to go down and clean up, and I need to uh, strain my milk and get it in the freezer and uh, for it to cool down. But I appreciate you being here. Use the brain that God and Granny gave you guys. It's there for a reason, okay? And keep praying about it. Like, subscribe, and share. Godspeed, God bless. I love you like a little pig. Be safe, okay? Be cool. Be cool. Do your thing. And I'll see you on the next video.